Happy Sabbath, church family. The title of today's message is Something Strange. Our passage of scripture that introduces this topic is found in 1 John 3.13. 1 John 3 and verse 13. Marvel not, it says. That means don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Marvel not, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. Don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. Marvel not if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. First Peter continues to introduce our topic, something strange, First Peter 4 and verse 12. As we look in the New Testament today at First Peter chapter 4 at verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. The King James Version says some strange thing. NIV says something strange. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trial and ordeal that comes on you to test you as though something strange was happening to you. Don't think it's strange that you are suffering. Make good choices, by all means. But don't expect that doing good will make you healthy, wealthy, popular, and exempt from trial. Instead, rejoice that you share in the suffering of Jesus. Here in this passage, we find a ray of hope and reassurance for people who are facing abuse, social rejection, public humiliation because they follow Jesus. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. Jesus is the living stone rejected by builders. Jesus is the one who ransomed and redeemed us by his own blood sacrifice and death. Jesus is the suffering servant, the suffering Christ in whose footsteps we are called to follow. As Christ suffered, it should come as no surprise that his followers will suffer too. How should we live as we pass through the refiner's fire? We are called to do good in the name of Christ to the honor and glory of God. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12 continues our introduction something strange 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12 here's how it reads yay that means yes and all that will live Godly in Christ 
shall suffer persecution. All that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Psalm 34, 19 says that afflictions are many. Don't be surprised. Don't you know that in the sight of God you are very special? And special people ought to act special. If you have been redeemed, you ought to act redeemed. This is the will of God. God expects certain things of us. Don't be surprised. God wants us to be special. Don't be surprised. God is carving out a kingdom down here that will be transferred up there and returned down here. He calls us a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people reflecting God's will to the world. It is the will of God that we reflect kindness and unity and faith and obedience and love to the world around us. And we are distinguishable. That's what that word Peculiar means distinctive. It is not our similarities with the world that attracts them to the message. It is the differences. There's something about the character of the remnant people that attracts. It creates interest and curiosity. And some will be satisfied with the answers they find. The world is filling up with prophets for profit religious hustlers, spiritual racketeers, there often comes with them a theological concept of prosperity. God never said, if you pray, I'll dump a thousand dollars on you. Jesus didn't do that for himself or his disciples. These distractions belittle the awesome plan of redemption, sealed by the blood of the Son of God. God expects somebody to be peculiar. He expects somebody in this church to be different, distinctive, while still being friendly and sweet and kind and helpful and honest and loving and humble. That's what God expects. Don't be surprised. A peculiar man is peculiar if he loves his wife and goes home to her at night, every night. That's peculiar nowadays. The world is looking for peculiar people. A place whose people are patient with their faith solid in the word of God. Faith solid in the word of God. Don't be shocked. They're looking for people refined and purified by fire. Don't be surprised. Don't think something strange is going on. Refining fires <coughs> turns sinners into saints. Don't be shocked. It changes how a person thinks. The refining fires change how a person looks, how a person acts, how a person does everything. Marvel not. Don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. One cannot follow the word of God without that word producing change. Why are we surprised? By beholding Jesus, we become changed. Don't you know Jesus is praying for us to make it? This produces change. God is getting us ready for a flawless society. The holiness of God. The holiness of angels. That's the neighborhood God is preparing us to enter. That's the hood I want to live in. If you want to live forever, say I do. If you want to walk on Golden Street, say I do. When the saints go marching in, I want to march with them. But if you want to be a saint up there, you have to be a saint down here. Be holy down here. Christ felt forsaken in the garden. Christ felt forsaken on the cross. 
and we must suffer for the sake of Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I gave my heart to Jesus. How about you? I gave my heart to Jesus. How about you? I asked him to come in and to take away my sin. I gave my heart to Jesus. How about you? Have mercy on us, Lord, and save us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.